Susie, quick sound check. Sounds good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Good morning, everyone. It is a Monday, August 5th. Hard to believe here. Uh, start of our lead uh, meetings in again for the 2024-2025 school year. Uh, good to see familiar faces here uh, on this lead meeting and also welcome those that might be listening or viewing by our recording. Um, you're going to hear from uh, Laura, Eric, uh, Lisa, Charlie and myself. And uh, Phil is enjoying some time off, so you won't hear from him today. Uh, tomorrow, we will be joining 27 new ADs in St. Cloud as uh, we get the opportunity uh, to greet them and uh, try to get them up to speed to the best of our ability to be successful. Uh, if you are a new AD and you're on here uh, joining us today, you're already a step ahead, and thank you for doing so. Just a reminder that it is zero week for uh, those that are participating uh, in zero week for football, we do have schools that have already begun. Thank you for uh, your work in doing so and letting us know and making sure that you're ready to go. Uh, we just want to make sure that uh, for this year, as we move to that next slide, you fully understand what lead is, what the intent is. And then also don't forget about your lead liaisons. A number of the topics that we have here today, uh, we'll touch on this, but this is a reminder. We have some heavy lifting here to do uh, as a membership including ninth grade governance, competitive section placement, as well as district football. Uh, just make sure that you're tuning in and getting this information. As Laura, Laura moves forward here with our agenda for today, how do we help you get the best start? How do we help you start successfully? And most of our meeting uh, will include that information here today. We're going to do our best to get this done in 30 minutes. Uh, just a fair warning, we may uh, go a, a titch longer than that 30 minutes, but we're going to do our very best to do so today. Uh, we're going to start with the boarding, uh, board meeting recap with Eric. Again, talk about getting that year off to a good start. You'll hear from most of us there, and then Charlie will bring us home uh, at the end at that time. So moving forward here, Eric, let's talk about our board workshop last week and uh, what things took place and moving forward into the year. Eric? Thanks so much, Bob, and good uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the 24-25 school year. Here we go. Um, a great time with our, our board of directors. They're a highly invested group uh, and do a, a great job representing each and every one of your schools when we come together. One of the focal points for us as a league, as well as for you as uh, member schools, is to focus on the strategic directions and how do we bring those things to life. Um, what, what we know is that uh, education-based activities and athletics are relatively unique to the high school league and other state associations, but don't necessarily live everywhere else. And so our board is uh, very much in favor of promoting and supporting what we stand for and what we believe in. Uh, and that's a focal point as we go forward. Again, remember strategic directions uh, are goal areas, but they are not specific goals. They're uh, areas in which we do work generally, uh, but require a little bit more focus there. Uh, obviously, you look at the second bullet there, and that has a lot to do with our students specifically, but also others involved. Health, safety, wellness, inclusion, and belonging are significant to everyone who participates within the league, whether it be uh, coaches, officials, students, or other. Uh, we need to do our very best to keep our events uh, and programs safe, respectful, and inclusive of all students. And then the last one, uh, the goal of the, le of the league's board here is to work really hard to continue their focus on policy governance. And that means creating policies and bylaws, et cetera, that are going to serve us best. 
not to get caught down in the, the lower levels and allow staff and schools to work through those, but to provide the leadership that we really need across the board uh, to allow us to be as effective as we possibly can. And really that last one there uh, has been there for a couple of years and then leads right into our next slide. And so when we take a slide, look at the next slide, we're talking about ninth grade governance. Uh, as we move forward there, um, ninth grade governance is the inclusion of all ninth graders and all ninth grade level participation within the high school league. And this has been a focal point of the board, uh, as well as a number of representatives of member schools over the past year. And uh, been very specific about creating a timeline under which we can uh, add ninth grade into the high school league. Again, this would be a constitutional change. Uh, and at the same time, the board recognized the importance of our task force uh, in creating one that represents all of our schools to really do a scrub of our bylaws and policies and say, what might this mean if we go forward with this and if our schools support it? Uh, we've been working with that group. They've been highly instrumental in helping bring forward uh, areas that we need to think about, uh, create new language for perhaps, and certainly update with newer language with the inclusion of ninth grade. Bob, you've been a big part of that task force as well. Other comments that you would make uh, on this as we continue through this process over the course of the school year? Yeah, no, great job summarizing, Eric. I, uh, it was said at our board workshop that our, our board works, our board was, you know, probably where we were in meeting too with the task force this week. We meet on week four. I think the more we talk with all the schools represented and types of schools represented is we're way more alike than different when it comes to bringing ninth grade under our governance. So when you think about uh, those teams being governed by the Minnesota State High School League, it's like some of our other teams. And those are the details that we're working through right now. And I think the other thing I heard, Eric, is this is where we'll keep you up to date on changes that may be taking place as uh, we make that constitutional vote. Eric? Absolutely. And speaking of the constitutional vote that is scheduled for early October, you'll get a bunch more information as we come through with area meetings. Uh, so make sure that's on your calendar to learn more about that. You can see the requirements. There's a quorum requirement of 75% of our schools weighing in on the vote, and we need a two-thirds majority of those 75% of schools. So it's a big it's a big number that we're looking for, but should we pass that proposal, that means ninth grade would come under the state high school league governance in 25-26, something that we as a staff and our board is looking forward to, and I believe a great number of our member schools are also looking forward to that. And then the, the recommendations of the task force come to life through the policy and bylaw proposals that would follow that member school vote throughout the remainder of the year. So uh, important steps. We'll keep you informed as we go through this. Feel free to reach out at any time with questions. Uh, and you can also talk with members who would be part of that task force as well to get really good background there. Laura, we can move ahead. Uh, and my final slide, um, finance always makes a difference. Uh, the league has been in a very good place uh, in the last couple of years, and it continues to be in a strong financial position to provide the programming and opportunities for our kids, uh, training for our coaches, uh, registration and uh, training for officials, all of those things. Uh, it doesn't happen by accident. The strategic uh, plan to build a sustainable financial future has played out very, very well. You can see uh, we set a state tournament attendance record this past year. Uh, incredible numbers of people coming to attend uh, there. And uh, I think we just topped the 590,000 person paid attendance for this past year. Obviously, revenues come from a variety of places, including sponsorship, streaming, and broadcast. And we've been very, very thoughtful about our costs and how we can control those to the best of our abilities. Uh, as a result, we've got a membership dues credit for this year of $1.7 and have also set aside some dollars for next year's credit as well. What does that mean? Although it's in the smallest print on the page, it probably should be on the largest. Those membership dues and the activity fees are the lowest uh, that we have on record for over 30 some years. And so $50 per activity and your $100 membership means that a great majority of our schools are going to be less than $2,000 to become member schools and the number that will be below 1,000. And I uh, feel like that's a very affordable way to be a part of the Minnesota State High School League. And again, I mentioned that we, will, we have dollars set aside for next year's credit as well uh, to try to continue to keep things at a a relatively flat level uh, as best we can on the membership side. So good news there, and uh, we're excited for the coming year. 
Bob, I'll turn it back to you. Thanks, Eric. And Eric, I believe you would agree that this isn't just for uh, information for people on this meeting. If you're an activities director here, please share this with your business managers, your superintendent, principal, whoever is uh, in charge of finances here to assist and better understand what membership with, uh, with the league means. Uh, speaking of success, uh, Lisa is going to uh, guide us through the next few slides here on really starting that year uh, successfully from your office. Lisa? Thanks, Bob, and good morning, everyone. It's nice to see everyone on this call and see some um, familiar faces and names. As you have been preparing over the summer, risk management and liability are two of the most important things you guys do in your jobs. Um, to ensure this, make sure that you are having good processes and procedures in place to continue to focus on the health, safety, and wellness of your programs. As you meet with coaches, make sure that they are aware of who's on their teams. If they have different people than there were last year and they have not met those student athletes before, make sure that they are aware of who's practicing and those who are eligible and registered. And so really making sure your processes within your department are in place and there's good communication for your coaches to make sure that they know who is there and who's eligible. On another note, make sure that your coaches have been on their dashboards, that they have accessed the required CERs that they're supposed to be taking. If you have new head coaches to your program, ensure that they have their head coaching certi certification. I know that there are some classes still available for coaches who you maybe just hired as a head coach in the next few weeks to get that done. So make sure you're checking your dashboard as well as they have set up their dashboard and are prepared to have those CERs and head coaches course completed. And then to event management, as you begin practice next week and you work with your event staff to prepare for this fall, as well as the rest of the school year, make sure you have good support where you're needed. First and foremost, make sure you're including your entire administration in your planning. Talk to your, your administration and make sure they're aware of processes and procedures that are in the best interest of your district. Make sure that you have ensure, ensured the number of officials you have in place for your contests and events. Make sure that they're eligible and that you have people checking to make sure who's there and who, who is scheduled to officiate is actually who's there to officiate. And then behavior expectations. We saw great strides last year with communicating the behavior expectations of our contests and events. Message that early and often is it's help, really helpful to set the tone for the year. Again, it's all about communication and making sure everyone in your district and those coming into your district know the expectations being set. As we move to the next slide, another piece of work um, that is here to assist you and hopefully assist your coaches is anyone can save a life. This website is live. It has great tutorials on developing your emergency action plan, practicing your emergency action plan, and making sure that you have the availability of AEDs in your schools to have successful emergency action plans should you need that resource. Make sure you're incorporating this the first week of practice, talking with your coaches about what that would look like, talking with possible medical staff that you have to help with this process and then um, making sure that it is practiced sometime during that first week of practice. And then finally, eligibility, as we said, knowing your student athletes and knowing who's participating, knowing the new kids in your school or on your programs and talking with your coaches, going over your official roster with them to ensure that you and your head coach are on the same page with the students in your program. The transfer, transfer portal is open. It is ready to be used by you. Um, it is located on your AD dashboard and it is found under your program management section. Make sure that you are reading the transfer portal as some of the statements have changed in, and some of the inputs have changed. So make sure you are aware of what's being asked of you as the sending school or receiving school. And as always, a best practice, if you have a transfer from another school, you have questions or you need to know more information, pick up the phone and call that other AD and ask. Also finding some mentors for those of you who are newer to eligibility to ask some of the more tricky situations. We have great ADs out there who are willing to help and support you through this process. Um, 
again, those are some things that you can do to ensure that your season is off to a successful start. I'll turn it back to you, Bob. Yeah, great. Thank you, Lisa. And Lisa, Susie, and I listen very closely to our membership. Uh, listen to that recording on the transfer portal and changes that have been made. Those changes have in large part been recommended by you to make your job easier when determining eligibility. As we continue on with eligibility and questions from you, this is a reminder from last April, I believe April 11th, what coaches can and cannot do um, in and around their season. So some of you use the term no contact period between now and August 12th, the start of that fall season. It is really out of season, right? So that no contact period uh, is part of our summer coaching waiver. Uh, please know what your coaches can and cannot do. And again, this was found on April 11th. And it's really that influence around their sport, right? When it comes to weight rooms being open or captain's practices and or open gyms, know what your coaches cannot do. Uh, the next slide, and this was again, popular last April, what your coaches can do. Um, and so please make sure that uh, we are out of season currently, unless you are in zero week, let's be in compliance with our coaches and our, um, our sports greatly appreciate that as well. Uh, moving forward here, um, the transfer eligibility guide, or formerly known as the Transfer Eligibility Guide. We'll have a recording updating uh, uh, on this under Education Resources coming soon. Uh, note some changes when you're looking at what types of school your students are attending and where their eligibility lies. Um, there were edits and changes made. Uh, again, this is found under Eligibility Resources. Um, we've re-identified or redefined uh, some of those. And then on the next slide, I believe, um, actually, let's stay there, I believe, Laura. You'll note new schools like uh, intermediate schools and ALCs also located uh, on this form that will assist you, again, in determining where your students are eligible. Uh, next, I think, Lisa, we're going back to you for uh, a new concept here, an exciting new concept on that pre-contest uh, medical timeout. Lisa? Absolutely. Thanks, Bob. And as a as a recommendation, highly recommended for all of you this year, you will be getting in your fall mailing two um, bag tag size options of this slide that's right here. And, and it's called the pre-contest administrative and medical timeout. And this is something that we heard from our member schools to have some format to what this might look like will be an easier work in, in their school, as well as many other states in the nation are requiring this. Um, again, this year we are highly recommending this new practice as a great way to do some of that communicating. This gives the site manager, coaches, officials, and medical personnel an opportunity to communicate plans prior to the game or contest. And it's something that can very clearly be done in about 30 seconds to two minutes, depending on your site, venue, and other things that might come into play. There is more information on our website, as well as some dashboard resources for you that are printable. And again, you will get in your fall mailing two of these, as well as um, a guide to use it. And so hopefully this is something you will find useful and helpful as you begin to manage those contests this year. And then I will turn it back to you, Bob. Yeah, very good. We're going to talk about membership requirements here next, and uh, Laura is going to uh, guide us on, uh, again, the next few slides here. Laura? Great. Thanks, Bob. And just to follow up to Lisa, um, this is what is coming in your fall school mailing. You will find clipped together a one-page handout along with two of the actual printed cards um, that bottom website there, mshsl.org slash timeout, does have a few pieces that go along with this that you can preview and or print right now at your convenience. Another resource that is available that is new to you is a piece that's been asked for by ADs about having a checklist of what are those requirements that I need to do each year as a good member school for the Minnesota State High School League. So again, this is new on your dashboard underneath the school administrator resources. There's a new button that says membership requirements checklist. This will take you to a three page 
downloadable spreadsheet. And it's three pages, mainly because it's three different topics, um, not because it needs to be three pages long. Um, it is divided into three sections, an annual list that all member schools must complete, then a seasonal list, and then finally some sports specific requirements. This is a list that's been looked through and vetted by a number of people, um, and it aims specifically around requirements, things that are called out in policy and or bylaw that are requirements for member schools. Um, our goal is to give you this as a tool to assist you in meeting all of those membership requirements. So again, where that is, and please make a copy of that, download that, use that for your good um, as you work to meet all of those requirements this year. A second piece to remind you about on your dashboard is you have a button called MSHSL staff. That's button will lead you to a page that shares all of our league office staff and their exact assignments within our office. Most of our programs are run by a director with an assistant, and you will find those folks' names, emails, phone numbers on that spot. This is not a piece that is accessible to the general public on the public side of the website. This is placed there because we know that you as ADs need that direct contact to get to those staff members in our office. So again, would encourage you to take this, use this. Um, some folks find this is a good printable piece to keep near their phone. Um, and we encourage you to reach out to those direct people that you want to or need to communicate with. Reminder that most of our public, we send them through the contact us form as that allows us to most easily get to those people and get those questions routed to the right spot. Moving on, um, additional pieces. A reminder that on your dashboard, you have a website help guide button. Behind that are a number of one pagers for different tasks and different things that you complete on the website. The first one on that list is the school administrator fall checklist. That is a rather lengthy document filled with links. So you may want to keep that in a electronic version, but that walks you through all of the important things of updating your school information checking on your coaches, making sure that they're assigned. And really can't emphasize enough how important this is. As we move toward a school vote in October, having a list of the superintendents at each school will be vital in that. As we move into sports and activities beginning, ensuring that those coaches both are assigned the correct learning and we can communicate with them that happens when you put coaches on your coach roster and that pushes the learning to them and it also pushes them to our communication lists. Uh, make sure again, as Bob and Lisa talked about earlier, um, directions are here for the transfer portal. And then also ensure that your schedules from our schools are syncing and explain, displaying on your team and school pages. So a number of things there for you and or your staff in your office to work through as we prepare for the upcoming school year. And then finally, a reminder, area meetings will be held during September. You can see the list of those. They begin September 9th in Otter Tail and end September 25th in Brooklyn Park and cover all corners and areas of the state in between those. Um, our staff enjoys this time as a time to get out and work with ADs, uh, meet face-to-face, -face, share some things, and learn from all of our ADs across the state. Registration is open for this. You'll find that under the MSHSL resources section over on the right-hand side of your dashboard under a link called Fall Area Meetings. Um, so would encourage you to sign up for a fall area meeting as you're able so that we can start preparing for those. Bob, with that, I'm going to turn it back to you. Anything that I missed or you want to add into those topics? Oh, really well done, Laura. I, I would say for our area meetings, we're going to try and not be redundant. So if we've shared topics here, we may go in depth at those area meetings. Uh, we're going to offer more recordings, again, to try and assist. We can have really focused time 
together on important topics that you have when we come to your part of the state. Um, Charlie, you're going to take us home here with our, our checklist and quick takes. So I'm going to turn it over to Charlie at this time. Great. Thank you, Bob. And welcome back to uh, the new school year, everybody. And uh, I, I remember this time well as, as teacher, coach, administrator, the optimism and energy that accompanies the new year. And I'm um, just really excited that you're here with us as, uh, as we kick it off. Uh, this slide details some newly approved tournament dates that were previously listed as uh, to be determined. Uh, due to a variety of uncertainties related to venue availability, school calendars, uh, where holidays happen to fall on the calendar, uh, for example. Uh, so you can see that boys and girls soccer state semifinals and championships um, are now scheduled October 29th and 30th, and again on November 1st. Uh, the prep bowl uh, will be held uh, November 22nd and 23rd. Uh, what's maybe a little different about uh, that particular schedule is it happens to fall this year the weekend before Thanksgiving, uh, which is atypical uh, according to uh, traditional dates. So that will be held um, that weekend before Thanksgiving. Uh, boys Swim and Dive will be held March 6th through 8th. And in the Boys Swim and Dive season, both the regular and postseason are scheduled one week, one week later for the 24-25 school year. And then finally on this slide, the track and field uh, state meet dates have been set for June 10th, 11th, 12th. Uh, that pushes our track and field championships to the uh, week following the typical dates. Um, and just a note there that the season start date and section dates uh, will not change. We are just creating a little bit of a cushion between our section and state chairman uh, based on um, the venue availability. And with that, we can move on to our quick takes. And uh, so just some uh, things to be aware of here as we move into the, uh, the start of the year. Um, Together We Make a Difference 3.0 will be coming to a region near you. Um, so continue to look for more information on that. Registration information will be up and ready by the time we embark on our area meeting swing. Um, so pencil those dates in, uh, identify students that uh, would be good participants and uh, plan to attend. The 24-25 handbook has been updated, now posted to the website and will be included in the school mailing this week. Please note that um, bylaw 413 uh, is worth reviewing and understanding the minimum number of contest officials uh, needed for each of the sports and activities. Um, also be on the lookout for a memo from Assistant Director Nickleby um, that outlines a waiver process. If you find yourself in an emergency situation where a scheduled official was not able to show up and be in attendance uh, at your event. Uh, 80 tournament cards, AKA passes, will be um, available here in the next week. And for your reference and use, the Together in Partnership video, this is the video that uh, your school board would have reviewed prior to renewing its membership with the Minnesota State High School League, can be found in the MSHSL resources section under school board resources. A vast majority of member schools have completed that task. Uh, for those uh, few that haven't, um, also a good reminder that that needs to be done uh, here soon in the coming days and weeks versus uh, months. And uh, with that, I can take us to uh, our checklist. And I realize this is a familiar territory for Phil to be delivering, uh, but you are stuck with me today. Um, and so we'll get you through this checklist here before I turn it back to Bob. Um, and again, these are just best practices, making sure your students are fully registered, uh, they've signed their paperwork, that they're eligible according to um, your school policies, but also the uh, bylaws and policies of the Minnesota State High School League. Uh, review and develop a plan to check officials' eligibility. And if it's not the AD, uh, make sure that it's a site supervisor, contest supervisor, make sure it's a coach. Um, but we want to ensure that uh, we have um, our events scheduled, as uh, Executive Director Martins uh, mentioned earlier, um, uh, and uh, Associate Director Quednow, that our events are uh, safe, uh, respectful, and having um, eligible officials as part of that requirement. Uh, 
each of our staff will be sending preseason memos um, probably today uh, or in the next day or two uh, to you and to your head coaches. Please take that opportunity to read those memos yourselves um, and review them with your coaches. And please reach out to the appropriate director if you have questions with the contents and messaging in those memos. Um, complete the fall website checklist and, and uh, make sure that uh, things are up to date so proper communications can be received. Uh, monitor your coaches' completion of the education requirements. Um, for coaches that have uh, completed the CER um, last school year, uh, know that they would be responsible for the annual uh, general rules meeting and the annual sports-specific or activity-specific uh, online rules module as well. And uh, as Laura mentioned, register for an area meeting. Supplies are coming uh, this week. You can uh, continue to order supplies through the uh, online store. And that is under the school administrator resources um, on your dashboard. Uh, emergency action plans. Keep in mind different um, venues that you use. Uh, keep in mind different levels that you might offer and what those emergency action plans uh, might look like based on uh, those factors. And then finally, um, in particular for those sports and activities that are outside, uh, please review the weather conditions and competition for practice. Uh, things like heat, humidity, uh, air quality index um, could all be factors here yet this uh, late this summer and into the fall season. And uh, that was a lot in a short period of time. And Bob, I'm going to turn it back to you. Great, Charlie. I take this uh, weather personally. The rain today reminds me of the end of our baseball tournament as well. So we're going to see you at an area meeting uh, coming to you soon. We won't see you again on here till October 10th. Looking forward to seeing many of you on the Chasing Influence professional development opportunity that Charlie and Dr. Troy Erdahl, who's here with us today, will be a part of. If you haven't been a part of that, there may be another opportunity coming soon as well. So Great job here today. Thank you for being in attendance. Have a great start to your year, and we look forward to continuing to work with you.